Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I am Craig. Now, if you know me, you know I love technology and I love to sail. The one thing about sailing and technology is you've got to learn to produce your own power, store your own power, convert it into the type of watts or volts or amps you need, and then use it and recycle the process. So, today we're going to talk about the storage capacity type, type of thing. This is my actual house battery from my boat. I switched out four lead acid batteries before last season to lithium iron phosphate and I have loved the transition. There's just so many features about lithium iron phosphate that are a thousand times better than lead acid. So if you have a boat, RV, camper, anything where you have house bank batteries, I highly suggest you upgrade to lithium iron phosphate. You will not be sorry. Now this is the one I bought over a year ago. This company, Zooms, and this company, Redodo, are actually the same company. They just rebranded. You can kind of tell because the color scheme is the same. Most batteries are black. This one's white with gray top. They sent me this as a demonstrator and I'm gonna test it and I'm gonna see if this has half the capacity of this. This is 100 amp hours, which works out to be 1280 watt hours. And watt hours are important because if you watch the last episode, you'll know that I just bought a, oh, Blue Eddy AC200 Max, which has a battery, lithium iron phosphate battery built into it that is 2048. So what I'm hoping to do with this 100 amp hour is use it, because it's quite easy to pick up and move around compared to the 200 amp hour, use it as a supplemental extra capacity for my solar generator. So we'll get into that in another episode, but let's just test this now. I'm going to charge it, just came out of the box. I'm gonna charge it fully up, then I'm gonna discharge it fully and, and see how many amp hours I get out of it. And then I'll charge it back full again, see how many amp hours go back in. Just for how it showed up, I just unpackaged it before recording this. It showed up in a nondescript box, which is kind of good in this day and age because whenever you advertise what something inside a box is and whichever company drops it off at your front door and just leaves it there unattended, you don't really want an advertisement for what's inside the box because if somebody thinks, hey, I want one of those, it might just get legs and walk away. It came very nicely packed in foam so you won't have any problems with shipping. You find it, get a cracked battery, a damaged battery. It comes with four of these, oops, four of these bolts that go into the top. There's little plastic caps on here now. You pop those out, you put these bolts in, and that's your uh, battery connectors. And then it also comes with little plastic caps that you can put on top in case you've got this out where it's accessible. You don't want to drop like a metal object across this and short out your battery. So that's the, what comes in it. It also comes with, you know, the usual kind of like safety warning card, nice little photos of what not to do. More importantly, it comes with a product manual, which you would think, Craig, it's a battery. Not a lot of moving parts here. What do I really need to know? Well, there's a lot of things that are good in here. One thing I learned by going through this, and I'm really impressed by it, many, many pages in color showing you everything you need to know. And one of the things is what voltage you should read when it's charged, fully charged, in case you don't have, I don't know, a smart charger that just stops when it's full. It'll tell you what voltage to get up to to be fully charged. And more importantly, it shows you somewhere in here, how to do it in series and parallel. And what I learned from this is you can do up to four of these batteries together in series or in parallel. And that's probably a, a topic for another episode. But in case you were wondering, you can put four of these batteries together and make yourself an ultra big battery bank if you want. And if you want to do it in series, you'll go up to 48 volt if you need a 48 volt system. And if you do it in parallel, you'll keep the 12.8 volts, but you'll now have 400 amp hours of capacity instead of 100 amp hours. So that's good to know. It shows you how to wire it and everything. Very good product manual. And I was actually surprised, maybe they know where they were shipping it to, but it's com completely in English. There's no other languages in this. So this whole manual is um, useful. A lot of manuals you get, it's really thick and you think, wow, there's gonna be a lot of information that you find out only two pages are actually in your language. This one is completely in English. Color shows everything you need to know. I learned a lot just flipping through that. So good for uh, Redodo for making a really nice manual. Okay, so let's get on with it. I'm going to, well, I've weighed it. It's 22.4 pounds. I weighed my 200 amp hour. It's 44.6 pounds. So they're ex almost exactly, this is almost half the weight exactly of this, which is what you would expect, right? Because it's 100 amp hours versus 200 amp hours. And it's the same technology. It just visually to me, didn't seem like this battery. It's obviously less less wide. It's also less deep. Uh, it's the same height. But I just visually thought this doesn't seem like it's half the size of this battery, but it is in weight and I guess in dimensions. So there you go. I'm going to, again, 
um, charge it fully because it says in the manual don't try I was thinking about depleting it and then charging it but it says charge fully before using so I'm going to do what the manual says <laughs> in case there's a reason and I'll charge it up then I'll decharge it all the way to zero and, and check how many amp hours I get out of it and then I'll let you know if it holds up to the rated 100 amp hours that's on the case stay tuned okay before I charge it up I wanted to see what the volts were now the manual says they ship them with 40 percent of its capacity and the 100 amp hour just came in at 3 point, sorry, 13.15 volts, which if you look at the old handy dandy, you know, print this thing off, what a lithium iron phosphate battery should have when resting. 13.14 would be, it says 13.1 is 40%. So there you go. It shipped with 40% battery. And I was curious, my 200 amp hour, I haven't charged it in the last week at least i fully charged it last time because i was planning to test it with my uh, solar generator as supplemental power so i did charge it up if you're not going to use your battery for a long time you shouldn't just charge your lithium iron phosphate up to full and then leave it like that it actually likes being left in a more resting state of around 80 ish percent but anyways i did charge it but uh, that was days ago and i don't know if you're going to be able to see that 14.32 volts whoa According to this, when charged, when charging, 14.6 is 100%. But it says when resting, 13.6 is considered fully charged. So it's at 14.32 volts. And again, I've had this battery for over a year on my boat as my house battery, getting solar charged and then decharged and whatnot. Um, something I'll mention here in case I forget to mention it. The thing I love about lithium iron phosphate is that they have... 3,500 to 4,000 cycles generally where they, you, I mean, cycle is fully dead to fully 100% charged. And even then you're only bringing down the rated capacity to 80% of its brand new state. 4,000 cycles from zero to full. And that's something you can do on a lithium iron phosphate. You can kill it right down to zero if you want. They have BMS battery, battery management uh, system chips in here that when it gets below a certain voltage it will just shut off so it can't you really can't damage these batteries um, 4,000 times totally discharging it to fully charging it I think the ABS plastic on this will break down before you run out of battery life so that's the thing I love about these you can buy these things and expect to get I mean how much depending on how many times you charge and discharge it 4,000 times probably like a decade and a half 15 years maybe so that's the thing. Buying lead acid batteries, you'll be replacing those. If you're on a boat and you're constantly using it, and again, lead acid battery you can only go down to 50%, can't go down to zero, or you will damage it. They don't generally have battery management system chips inside. So um, yeah, you'll get a couple, two, three years out of lead acid batteries, and then you gotta throw them out and go get new ones. You'll save yourself a ton of money getting lithium iron phosphate. I was just surprised that 14.33 volts is what this thing's showing, and I haven't charged this thing in probably a week. So it goes to show you <laughs> pretty damn good cells inside these um, Zooms and or now rebranded name of Rodoto. So I'm going to now charge it full and then I'll discharge it and see how many amp hours I get out of it. Okay, I'm just about to charge this thing. I'm looking through this manual. I'm learning all sorts of stuff here. So here's the, here's the charger I use to charge my 200 amp hour battery. It's a smart charger. It looks like a normal one you would charge your lead acid as well. It's supposed to be a char smart charger. I had it set to optimal, which goes from four amps to 25 amps. And I noticed when I did it, it starts at four amps. And four amps charging a 200 amp hour battery takes forever. It goes at four and then it come back a little while later and it's at seven and then it goes a little while later and it's at 11. It slowly makes its way up there, but it gets, I don't know, it's so many hours. I don't even know if it actually gets up to 20 amps. Just dumb luck, but when I knew I was getting this battery, I started thinking maybe I want to get a newer, smaller for sailboat purposes. I'm not dragging this on my boat. This thing was, you know, I got limited space. I went out on Amazon and I'll put the link down below of this one that got really good reviews. Anyways, it's a 20 amp hour and you can pick lithium, AGM, lead, LIFO. It's not like this one just automatically tries to sense what your battery is based on how much volts and amps it seems to be able to absorb. I think I'm going to be happy with this one. A for size, B, looking at the book, and it's talking about current and the optimal current and all that stuff. And they're saying you can go 0.2 and that's uh, 0.2 is 20, 0.2C, sorry, is 20 amps. You can go 0.5C, which is 50 amps. 
Well, this thing only goes to 25 amps. So um, I'm thinking I've heard 0.2C is probably, you know, you're not overstressing the battery. I'm gonna go 0.2C, 20 amps. But the way this one works is you choose whether you wanna go five amps, 10 amps, or 20 amps in the settings and you tell it it's a lithium iron phosphate. So I think I'm gonna, I'm a little worried. This is the reason I bring this up. A little worried that my resting 200 amp hour battery is at 14.33 volts. According to this, that's above 100%. So I'm wondering if my automatic charger just charged the crap out of it. So uh, I'm gonna use this new one and I'm gonna let you know how it goes. Also like this one actually has a digital readout that shows you things like amp hours and stuff, shows you how many amp hours have gone in, which is good for our study here. But I just thought I'd let you know that because I've, everything I've ever read says these smart chargers are fine. I th assumed starting at a low amp and then working your way up would be optimal because that's what the setting says is optimal. But uh, according to this, no, 20 amps. To start with 20 amps and just consistent 20 amps, the BMS in here will probably manage it. And also I was reading about the BMS. If you ever do deplete your battery down to zero, um, the BMS will shut itself off so you don't damage the battery. But the thing is, then you need to shock the battery with another 12 volt battery in order to wake up the BMS. Because if you ever get a battery that's completely dead, you'll go to put your, your uh, voltmeter on it, it'll show nothing, like the battery is broken. Just don't freak out, just take another 12 volt battery, touch it to this, that wakes up the BMS and then allows it to wake up and tell you that it's at whatever volts it's at. Um, so there you go. It's a little bit of a trick of the trade. I've heard about that before where people put the voltmeter on and think, well, I guess this battery is dead and it's not dead. It's just sleeping. So there you go. So I'm going to charge it now with the new one and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. We are off to the races. So I've got it set to 20 amps. I've got it set to lithium iron phosphate. It's presently pumping in 14.7 volts. Last time it went around 14.5 amps. That's what it's charging at right now. So it's not doing the full 20, even though I've set it to 20 amps, it's not doing the full 20. I guess it's sensing the battery at this stage of charge. They don't want to jam 20 in yet. So we'll see. We'll see if that changes. I'll let you know at the end. Okay. So after draining the battery completely down, I got 102.07 amp hours. I did a constant draw of about seven amps, 85 watts. As you can see, plugged in to the little alligator clips. So yeah, it beats the 100 amp hour capacity. Okay, I am back after about five, six days of really putting this through its paces. I've charged it fully. I've decharged it fully. I first did it with this. I did two full depletion cycles with this. This is just like a, you pick how many amps you want to take out what draw. I did, I think, seven amps, uh, about 85 watts of constant draw to see how many amp hours I'd get out. Both times I got 102, 103 amp hours when I went from full, full, full to empty. And that is more than the specs of 100 amp hours. So I'm very happy with that. Again, I'm, I've got the 200 amp hour version that I've had on my boat for over a year. I've been super happy with it. Exact same company, different, different name, but as you can tell, it looks the same. Um, grade A lithium iron phosphate cells, more than the stated capacity. It has a 100 amp uh, BMS, so you can take in 100 amps or out 100 amps without damaging, the BMS will allow it. BMS also has overcharge protection and undercharge protection or depletion protection, so you can't damage the battery by draining it to zero. The BMS will shut it off when it gets to a certain level. And on the upside too, most smart chargers will be able to tell that it's full and stop charging, but if for some reason your smart charger's not that smart, and just keeps trying to charge it when it's already full, the BMS will turn off the ability to charge it to uh, protect the battery. So very good uh, features built in. And this is the basic battery. This is the basic 100 amp hour battery. I was thinking of pros and cons, like I like to do for most things. Pros, of course, it's a great battery. Quality is good. I have a, rec a track record with the same brand um, battery already. And I can't complain, it does everything it's supposed to do. So I was trying to think, well, what are the cons? Well, at first I was thinking, well, it's not a heated battery, so you really shouldn't charge this in super cold conditions, like minus 10, whatever, and below. You shouldn't leave this outside in an uninsulated shed and then try and charge it with solar or some other way because lithium iron phosphate don't like to be charged in cold conditions. Um, and I was gonna say, well, maybe that's a feature they should have given, put it a, a heating feature in it, which I know some batteries do. I thought well, maybe they could put a, 
you know, a button you press to see the capacity and the LEDs, like is it half full, three quarters full? So I was gonna pick on that, and then I went on the website and found out they already have smart batteries like that. This is just not one of them. They do have one called a smart battery that has a power button and the LEDs light up, and it gives you a bunch of information of things you can turn on or turn off with that button, and it's also heated. So if it senses it's too cold when power comes in, it will use some of the battery capacity to turn on little heaters inside here, heat it up to above a safe level for charging, and then accept a charge after that. So if you live in a very cold climate and your batteries are for some reason in an uninsulated shed, then uh, maybe that's the battery. Now that's quite a bit more expensive than this. I looked on the website. This battery right now on the American site is on sale for $299. Uh, again, sale price that might change when you go on there. I'll put the website link below. Also, they gave me a <clears throat> code COD3. You'll get an additional 3% off uh, below a certain dollar value, <clears throat> above a certain dollar value. I think they might even go up to 4%. Uh, I also noticed on there that if you buy one battery, it's whatever price. If you buy two batteries, they discount the price a little bit on each battery. If you buy three, four, you know, the more batteries you buy, the bigger discount you get as well. So go on the website, check it out. All your needs would be fulfilled there no matter what kind of battery you need. And that's about it. Oh, I want to talk about use cases. So one way I was using it uh, to deplete it instead of just plugging into this and just drawing it down without any benefit is I started plugging this into a cigarette adapter. And from that, you can either have an, a, a 12 volt fridge like this Bouge RV fridge freezer can run off this battery for a long time. Um, or you can supplement your solar generator. You can plug this in and most solar generators come with the ability to plug into a car adapter. So if you have the alligator clips to a cigarette adapter thing, then any of your solar generators can be plugged into that and be charged as if it's plugged into a car. Um, it adds about 100 amps on my Blue Eddy AC200 Max. I plug it in just free, right? This thing plus the normal built-in cigarette adapter that it comes with and off you go, you're getting 100 amps charging, almost as if you're plugged into solar, uh, just by being plugged into this. Again, 100 amp hour is 1,280 watt hours of additional capacity for your solar generator or to run a fridge. That'll run a fridge for a, quite a long time because fridges don't stay running all the time. They turn on until they get to the right temperature and then they shut off. A very efficient fridge will probably be off more than 50% of the time. It's more like a 30% of the time it's running and 70% of the time it's not. So you can run a 12 volt fridge off of this battery. Uh, if you wanna go camping with it and you don't wanna run it off your car battery because you're afraid you're gonna drain your battery, then bring this. It's pretty easy to bring this along. It's not that heavy. Um, and there you go, you've got that. Solar generator extra capacity is another thing that I'm gonna use it for and I'll probably make a video about that, how you can take just your standard lithium iron phosphate battery and plug it into a solar generator and get double, triple, depending on how many batteries you have, uh, extra capacity on a solar generator, far, far cheaper than what you would get for, uh, from the additional batteries they can sell you for these solar generators. So Blue Eddy sells a separate battery that doubles the capacity. You can get two more to triple your capacity, but you're not getting it for $299. You're paying quite a bit more. So those are the pros and I guess the cons, which really aren't any cons, it's just this doesn't have all the features, but then again, you're not paying super high price for it. Tried to find some cons, really couldn't think of any. So hopefully you found that informative. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Again, my next episode might talk about how you can just supplement your solar generator by plugging this in and how well that works, how long you can go on just a 100 amp hour battery, how many hours can you go at 100, 100 amps or 100 watts into a solar generator, how long can this go doing that to add capacity and uh, whatnot. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a what do I think of the Blue Eddy 200 watt solar fold out solar panel or the AIMTOM 100 watt and why you would want this versus this or vice versa. And just as a little hint, the reason you might want something small like this, this is an Amazon purchase, very inexpensive relatively to this, little less quality, but sometimes that's all you can use. Prime example, this solar generator will not accept the 200 watt uh, solar panel because it doesn't accept the voltage level of that, but it'll accept the voltage level of that. So there's times where bigger is not always better, right? So look forward to those episodes. Until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. Ciao for now.